It's a new year. Full of new possibilities. New opportunities. And hopefully some new faces. If this is your first visit. Or your first time in a while. We're so happy you're here. Here's a little bit about us. We are just ordinary people. Serving an extraordinary God. We strive to be friendly and welcoming. And can't wait to get to know you. We know life is complicated. So we will work really hard. To provide practical and relevant messages. To equip you on your journey with Christ. We care about this community. And believe it's our job to make it better. We are so glad you're here. Worshiping God with us. Welcome, Welcome to, to our church, church the, the Wings, Wings of Love Ministries. Ministries. Good morning, Wings of Love. It is a joyful day to wake up on this side of heaven. As they say, we thank God for being able to wake up uh, to get this thing right. Give it up to the God that woke you up this morning, started you on your way, as they say, uh, for you to be able to get another chance. Um, if you're in the bed, get up out the bed, stretch, move around, go get you something to drink. If you aren't with your family, bring your family together for you to be able to watch church service. I believe without a shadow of a doubt that we have been watching uh, this virtual service, this virtual world, and we're, we've gotten, and I've, I'm guilty of it too, so that's why I can talk, uh, where we're just too comfortable. If you're going to sit up in your, if you're going to lay up in your bed, at least sit up um, and get comfortable and, and prepare yourselves for the word. I'm going to be bringing you a word today, and the title of it is, Lord, help me to begin again. Um, I know it blessed me in the uh, preparation, so I know it's going to bless you in the presentation. I know I got it from God to give to his people. So I hope that it manifests itself into your lives, into your mindset, that it does something for I you. I want to, I know it's offering. I want to literally give you all, I know we have, uh, as you've seen before, Tiff doing the announcements about um, the shares. Um, I want to give you all a shout out myself from uh, all of the shares being 90 plus shares um, for Sunday service. Um, as she's forestated, uh, we want to do the same thing for Bible class. We all listen. It don't even take nothing. Literally, all you're doing is hitting the share button. If you're on YouTube, it says share, and then you can text that link out to somebody. It's just a simple share. We want to be able to give our church the greatest of looks there is because we got a pastor that is so great that we want to show him off and brag on him and say, you want to hear a message from our pastor. Pastor Alvin Jackson Sr. We know that he is a powerful man of God. And so we want to be able to do that within our shares. Listen, at one point in time, we had like, I, I believe 500 plus more people uh, looking at the services. Then it went up to a thousand. Then it went to 1400 of people looking at the service. Listen, that is great. But guess what? If we only have 90 plus shares and all those people watching, then that means there need to be more shares that need to be made. I need you to share. Listen, if you know somebody that's not sharing a service and they're a member, if they're a visitor, they get a pass. They don't have to share. It. But members, spread the word of our service. It's on YouTube. All of us got smart TVs and iPhones and tablets and Androids that got different apps. YouTube is on everything. You done bought a tablet for your kids so they can stop using your phone for YouTube. YouTube, Facebook Live, spread the word that Wings of Love Ministries is online. Wednesdays at 7, Sundays at 1030. Help us. And in the near future, Pastor will be bringing us some more uh, inspirational uh, tools and messages that he will give to us on this online virtual world. But we want to make sure we spread the word. Um, Wings of Love. This is your chance to give. It's tithe and offering time. We know that the information is on the screen. If you are blessed to have a job, this is the opportunity where you will give now. Um, you may be giving uh, through Givelify. You may be giving uh, by sending in via mail. I know we have some old school people and that's okay. I know I'm new school, so I'm not going to talk about you. We got some old school people who be like, I'm not dealing with cash app. I'm not dealing with online giving. I'm going to mail or bring it or y'all going to have to pick it up. And that's fine. Uh, wings of love. So 
give our visitors, those who want to bless Wings of Love Ministries, um, a warm welcome as well. Uh, we'll do it again later because I know people tune in um, late into the service. So I want to make sure I give it up to our visitors multiple times throughout the service because visitors don't have to come to your church, don't have to log in online. So I don't want to be uh, so unappreciative that I don't give thanks and appreciation to the visitors. Wings of Love, I miss you. We haven't been in church all of these Sundays. It's like, and I, I believe, um, according to Trustee Stan Jones and, and Pastor Jackson, that we won't be coming back um, until after first Sunday of February. So first Sunday of February, we will be online as well. Help spread the word. I will have a flyer um, up online talking about that. Um, but it's preaching time. Um, but before the sermon comes, um, we will hear from our choir, Voices of Praise. Why? Because there is no way that I can live without him. If you help me this morning, we'll have a little church right where you at. Hallelujah. Come on and help me this morning. Hallelujah.
Lord, can you hear me? I'm here, fighting, pressing to remember what you said. But this onslaught of thoughts fills my head with dread and I need you. Like enemies encamped, shrouded in the dark, I can feel the fascination of too many temptations reaching for my heart. So I need you to hear me. For I know your ears are attentive to the righteous and I know that your ways are certain. Even when my worries would trample me to dust, still, I know you are good. Your hand is just. So come now, be the salvation for my sins. Help me to begin again, that you would mend this trend of hopelessness. God, deliver me in my brokenness. I can feel your presence, even now in the ugly, in the mess that has been made. You surround me with your benevolence. Yes, your love is on display, and I can see it. Carving roads through the struggles and the troubles, past temptations and devices that seek to choke me out. So come fear, come failure, come opposition or doubt. Jesus, you are my deliverance. Your grace is sufficient. Trusting you is my only way out. Now I turn my mind to dwell on your truth. Curate the condition of my heart to manifest joy. Be my living proof. Subdue the haters. Quell the voices inside. Transform me, Lord. Extinguish my pride. You've won the battle. I trust in your plans. Yes, God. I surrender all my worries, my woes, and my demands into your eternally capable hands. Give it up for our choir, Voices of Praise, as they minister to us through song. Uh, Wings of Love, family members, uh, friends, visitors, uh, people who's watching on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, I wanna welcome you to Wings of Love Ministries. I know Pastor and First Lady gave us um, a welcome in the beginning, but just in case you're tuning in now, um, or you're late to the service. Welcome to Wings of Love Ministries. I am Minister Alvin Jackson, Jr. Um, I won't be before you long. It's preaching time. Uh, open up your Bibles to Jeremiah 18, uh, verses one through six. Jeremiah 18, verses one through six. If you don't have your Bibles, because I know most of your Bibles are on the phone, if you're not, um, like Pastor Jackson, and he said he has to smell the fresh pages of when he turned his Bible. Um, I will have it on a screen for you. Um, it reads, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he, wo he wrote a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. And so he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. I'd like to tag the text with the topic of, Lord, help me to begin again. Lord, help me to begin again. Uh, many of us here today and many people you know need um, a new beginning. Uh, we know that God is the God of second chances and God is the God of new beginnings, um, but that sometimes get hard in our lives when we're going through so much, it seems like he's not willing to give us another chance. Um, have you ever wished you could go back and start over? Maybe because of an unpleasant situation of your own doing or own making, but you just wish you can go back and start over. 
Um, if if only you could take the words back that you said to that person, if only you could have made different choices, if only if I can get him or her back into my life, if only I had a chance to make the phone call and forgive the person or, 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 or say sorry and apologize to the person that I wanted to. But now they're dead and gone. If I could only go back into the elementary, middle school, high school, college days, if I can only go back into the days where I was playing hide and go seek and tag in the streets, if I can only go back to when my parents were saying I had to come home before the street lights got on those seem to be the days where my innocence was there when I seem like I can do no wrong if I could just go back into the day and seem to get this thing another chance I would do some things different sadly in most cases it is impossible to go back and change what has been said or done this is, however, one of the areas in your life that you can have a new beginning and you can have a fresh start that is within your spiritual life. Can I just simply tell you when you're you're in entering into a new spiritual life, you, you can't always look behind you trying to walk forward. I, I, I challenge you now in your home right now, if you can just stand up, if you feel like it and don't believe me, stand up and turn your head. And walk forward. I guarantee you that you're going to wreck something, walk into something, drive looking backwards, but going forward. You're going to crash. If I just preach to you looking back, you're going to turn onto the screen trying to figure out who am I talking to? What am I talking about? And why am I doing it like that? But when I look at you. You know that I'm talking and preaching and ministering to you. Because I'm looking forward, I'm preaching forward, but yet some of us in our lives want to look back and still move forward, but we want a different result. You can't move forward looking back at the past. You can't have that thing back. It's too late. I don't want to be insensitive as I minister this word, Lord, help me to begin again. But I want you to understand that looking back, you're just wasting your time. Oh, if I could have done this different. Oh, if I could have graduated. Oh, if I could have not had this kid. Oh, if I could have did this. And, oh, I got this and this. And, oh, blah, blah, blah. We serve a God, a God of second chances that you can get another chance to get this thing that stands in front of you right. And when you allow yourselves to open up your arms or should I say you allow him to open up his arms and you walk into his bosom, then watch what he allows to manifest within your life. Your spiritual life can have a fresh start. God used a unique matter to teach Jeremiah a valuable lesson. Jeremiah is a true prophet with the people's best interests at heart. At this time, he's he's very discouraged and about to give up on God's people. He seemed to think God had done all he could. And now there is no hope. Look at that. We are we're, we sometimes imagine being like Jeremiah, because I, I believe we can imagine this. Because we've all been there when we just gave up on people, when we have no more hope or belief in this particular person or persons where we just throw in the towel and just simply say, no, I, I, I don't believe that person can do it. I, I, I believe that prostitute is going to be a prostitute for the rest of their life. I believe that drug addict is going to be a drug addict for the rest of their life. You in mess now. God ain't going to bless that mess. You're going to be a mess all your life. I don't know why I believe in you. I don't know why I give you a chance. I don't know why I trust in you. I don't know why I keep picking up the phone. I don't know why I keep calling you. I We've all been there when we just trying to figure out why do I still believe? And so this was where Jeremiah is. He's looking at their lives. He's looking at their circumstances and he just don't have any hope in God's people anymore. And so he's thinking God has done all he could. There's no way all of what he's done and these people still don't get it. He done, done all he could. These people are a lost cause. How many of us can just hit in the comments that I've been there? I've, I, I can name some names now. Matter of fact, I can tag some people now here on Facebook that I just lost hope in. Don't you tag them? But we all know. We know some people where we just said, forget it. Maybe it wasn't a particular person. Maybe it was just a relationship. You just said that. I don't have any more hope in this relationship. Maybe it's within your job. I don't even have any more hope within this job. But God told him to go down. This is the mindset of Jeremiah. He said, go down to the potter for an object lesson. 
uh, that's where he saw a potter at the wheel intently shaping a vessel. And the potter's foot was on a treadle moving the wheel around and around as the potter shaped the vessel. But just as the vessel seemed to be taking shape and becoming lovely, something unexpected happened. The vessel was marred. We are not sure just why, but it was marred. Jeremiah probably thought the potter would reject the crumbled clay as if the material was now of no value. This is the mindset of Jeremiah. This is what Jeremiah is thinking and going through right now. But instead, he flattened it again, put it back on the wheel and caused it to take shape once more. He might have cast it aside with the waste and, and utter disgust. He might have abandoned it completely. He didn't give up on it. It was only satisfying when he had put his best foot forward. His best foot into it and brought out of the clay its highest possibilities. It is the shaping and bringing out of its highest spiritual possibility that the divine potter wants to do for you what it has done for me and others. He has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. His plan is personal and his plan is definite. And when we understand that it's personal and that it's definite, then it means when it's for me, it's for me. I don't have what the blessings that Pastor Jackson have. Pastor Jackson don't have the blessings that Minister Jackson has. Weezer Love don't have the blessings that Second Ebenezer have and vice versa. It's personal. What's mine is mine. And so when you believe that it's personal and that is definite, then God will allow some things to happen in your life where we will give no one the credit but God. We've been saying that for years, too. A big conjunction. But God put that in the comments. But God. It's personal. He alone knows our possibilities and he desires the best for each of us. Literally, when you understand that some things will happen in your life that you will be like, whoa, God. I want my cup to runneth over. Don't just fill up to the top. I want it to run over because if God has for me something greater then I want to obtain it, I want all of it. I don't want two thirds of it. I want all of it. So if you are disappointed, if you are discouraged because your life has not shaped up to the divine will because you have not yielded to the pressure of his hand or because your life is not what he wanted or wants it to be, then know that God has a message of hope and assurance for you. See, when all hope is lost, that's when supreme faith should be right there for your hope to fall on. What, what are you saying, Minister Jackson? What are you saying? You I don't I don't I don't understand when you say that my hope should have something to fall on. OK, let me see if I can break it down to you like this. What I'm simply saying is you need to distinguish the difference between hope and faith because they're not the same. I know we seem to think that they're the same, but they're not the same. Hope is an expectation of a specific thing happening. Faith is a complete belief and trust of the unseen, but the confidence that no matter what, it will happen long as it's the will of God in my life. And that's why I say to you, let your hope have a level of faith to fall on, because if your faith is strong enough, just like that, your hope can be restored. Because in this Christian walk in life, we will have a moment where hope is all lost. But if faith is strong enough, then when your hope falls, when your hope slips, faith is strong enough to pick it right back up, place it back on your shoulder. And now you have hope and faith in God to manifest whatever he wills to manifest. God, let your will be done because my faith is going to be strong enough for my hope to fall on. My faith is going to be strong enough for me to walk on, stand on. My foundation is so secure. It don't matter what uh, may fall on top of me. I'm going to be able to come out of it bright, shining. Shining. You have to believe. And you have to build up enough faith for your hope to fall on. And if you don't think that you will have a season where hope is all lost. <laughs> live long enough, as, as, as preachers would say. Just like that. 
things can change in your life. But the problem is you have allowed hope to be lost and it don't have anything to fall on. And so now you're in the situation that you're in a lot longer than you should be because you didn't turn it all over to God. And, and that's what basically he's going through. And that's what we're going through in our life. But we have a moment where God sometimes and most times will come into our lives and gives us a parable or an example where we can look at that thing and say, you know what? Let me check myself. Sometimes and y'all heard me say this before. Sometimes you got to check yourself. A lot of times you got to check. You always want to check somebody else. Oh, I just told this person off. But sometimes you got to check yourself. Put in the comments right now, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, check yourself. God is working on us. He wants to shape us according to his divine design and plan. Thank you, Holy Spirit. See, if you understood that it's a divine plan and that it's a divine design, then that means it's a divine order and for me to get to it. So I must literally go left when he say go left and go right when he say go right. It's like a cheat code on a game. You have the cheat code. Rely on it, big brother. Rely on your big sister. Rely on your father. Rely. You have a cheat code. Stop walking around here talking about you a believer and not operate within your cheat code. You can literally face the devil with your cheat code and defeat him and get to the next level for the new devil. Lord, help me to begin again. See, when you realize that you are, are, are a divine plan, then your mental should rely on trusting the process. God can take you through the wilderness and lead you to all kinds of ways. And guess what? Trust the process. We've been saying it for years and we're going to continue to say it. Trust in the process. But let me tell you, you won't understand it while you're going through something. But that's where your faith should be so strong enough that I believe that you died on the cross for sin. I didn't I didn't see you die on that cross, but I believe you should have that same belief in trusting the process because you didn't see him die on the cross. You read and heard he died on the cross, but you believed in your heart. So you should have the same belief in your heart and manifest itself to say, God, I believe without a shadow of a doubt. And the whatever it is you're going, this is so ugly that I'm going through. This is so dark. I can't even see through the rubbish that I, I, I can't see through the clouds. But I'm believing on the other side. There is a great expect. I mean, there is a, a great abundance on the other side. Trust the process. Because in order for you to get to your promise, trusting the process is the way. It's the way you got to trust the process. Stop listening to people. If God told you that you should take all the money that you have and invest it in yourself, trust the process. If he said that you could be a CEO or owner, trust the process. If he told you that you should walk off that job, that he has something greater for you. If it's from God, then walk off that job. People up here telling you you can't lose weight. You can lose weight. You can have happiness in your marriage. You can have peace in your home. Trust the process. He says, I leave peace. None like no other. Trust the process. That means that peace is like no other. That means while you're going through and you're trusting the process, even though it's dark, you can have peace within the midst of a dark day. Trust the process. If God gave you that and the clarity, then trust the process. Put in the comments, trust the process. Don't worry about seeing it in the natural. If you got it from God, hear me. If you got it from God, then trust the process. It don't matter how crazy it looks to people. It don't matter how stupid it sounds to people. It don't matter how chaotic it may look. If God gave you the clarity, the demand, the command, the discernment. Then you can trust the process. The problem is we don't trust the process because it's our own process. And when it's our own process, then things are going to sometimes get chaotic and hectic. And so now we don't trust the process. But when it comes from God, you can trust the process. I say the sermon title again. Lord, help me to begin Again, 
If you haven't got it by now, then that's your fault. Tap your neighbor, text your neighbor, call your neighbor, tag team with the neighbor here on Facebook and YouTube and tell them if it's discerned from Christ, then trust the process. You got to trust the process. God here says to his people, as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are you in my hand. When our plans, hopes, dreams or, or life doesn't turn out like we desire, when we realize we are flawed, when we realize we have made mistakes, when we fall apart at the seams, God can put us back together. He provides a door, the way to begin again. And this door is open to anyone who will enter it. But you must enter it by trusting or should I say when you enter it, you must enter it by trusting the process. Trust it. Why you as soon as you walk through that door, trust the process. When you walk in your door at home, you trust that it was just like you left it, that no one, no criminal was in there. Nobody had broke in. You trust. So you have to do the same thing within your Christian walking in your life, whether it's for you, whether it's for a family member, whether it's for an enemy, whether it's for somebody that's hating on you, whether it's for a job. You got to trust the process. If you 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 used to be an alcoholic, you used to be a prostitute, you used to be a hoe bugging this and that. You got to trust the process. The lost man, his his life blighted and ruined by sin, has the gospel invitation, which caused him to start over again. You don't believe me. Isaiah one and 18. I'm gonna read a couple of scriptures for you. Come now. And let us reason together, save the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. But Psalm 103 and 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions, our sins, our, our, our mess ups, our hang ups from us. One of the most beautiful facts related to salvation is the cleansing and removing of the past and a new life for the future. I just told you, you can't be looking back and moving forward. That's the best part about our God, because we won't even give man or woman a second chance right now. There's somebody looking at me on live. That's like, uh, yeah, uh, that that's me. I, I'm not asking you to raise your hand or show yourself. There's somebody right now looking on live saying it's somebody that I need to forgive. But here it is. God says, I not only forgive you, I forget. I erase your I forgive you. I erase your past and you have a new future, a new life, a new destination. One that you couldn't even imagine. God offers us a chance to start all over again. God offers us a chance to begin again and to the fallen Christians, to, to the backsliding uh, Christian, to the failure uh, Christian who, who slipped and didn't think he can get back up. One who has started well, but has yielded to the Lord, the world, the flesh and the devil. But so what, what I'm saying is. You can't be doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different results. I think they call that insanity. But can I just tell you that that's more than insanity? That's just a waste of time. God wants to give you something greater. He wants you to be greater. Stop going into the same trials or, or should I say dark moments and dark days and and all of these different things with the same type of prayer that you went into with the last one. You got to have a stronger prayer life into this next uh, thing that you're going through. You got to have a stronger uh, desire to want to be better in this next one. You got to be hungry and starving for the word of God. We keep going and doing the same thing over. We keep coming to the altar, leaving the same cigarettes we kept picking up, the same drink we kept picking up, the same boy or girl we keep going back and forth with. Maybe it's yours and maybe it's not. Maybe it's somebody else's husband or wife. We keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. When God is saying, I want to give you something that is yours. I, it's It's personal. I'm giving you what's yours. I want your cup. Whoever I'm talking to, I'm looking in the screen now. He's saying, I want your cup to overflow. I want you to have your own husband, own wife. 
I want you to have your own company. I want you to be able to work for yourself. The doctor told you you couldn't have a kid. I'm telling you, you can have a kid. The devil told you that you weren't going to be able to be happy and you're going to be depressed and have anxiety and depression all your life. I'm telling you that you can. Don't throw in the towel. If you just rely on me, I can help you to begin again. It don't matter if you was a hindrance. Some, it's somebody I'm talking to right now. You know you was a hindrance. If y'all don't want to admit it, I know I was a hindrance to the kingdom of Christ. He allows you to get this thing right. If this is your condition, God holds out his hands to you and beckons you to this place of new beginnings. Lord, help me to begin again. If you realize throughout this sermon, I'm going to yell out that title, that sermon title, because Lord, help me to begin again. I got a couple more scriptures for you. Philippians 3 and 13 and then Hebrews 12 and 2. I'm going to have it on the screen. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Hebrews 12 and 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the Christ, despising the shame and set and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. When God instructs him to go to the potter's house there, he saw the potters working with the clay. It got messed up. And so the potters had to reshape and remake it just like I'm explaining to you. He's trying to reshape us and, and remake us and remold us into something greater. God says that that's what I'm trying to do for the house of Israel. So don't give up on the people. Jeremiah was like, man, forget them people in Israel. God said, I, I, I want to give you a clearer picture, Jeremiah. I want to use you to let you to let them know that there's something greater on the other side. They're flawed, Jeremiah. They're marred. I want to remake them if they'll let me. Jeremiah, I, I, I want to make them into the beautiful creation that they're destined for. Jeremiah, I'm going to use you so they can get a brighter and clearer picture. God offered them a chance to begin again. God, through Jeremiah, is trying to warn Israel. Alvin, Minister Jackson, through this message, is trying to warn you that destruction is coming. And if you don't listen, then you're going to be part of that destruction. And I don't know about you. I've had enough destruction in my life to be part of another level of destruction. But they didn't listen. Will you? God offered them an opportunity to begin again, but yet they didn't. By yielding yourselves and your life to his skill, purposeful and loving hands, I give you a chance to do it again. Yet this place and time is where we must begin again. We will not be offered another chance at salvation after we die, nor will we be offered another chance at sanctification after we die. I know it's been said multiple times from a couple of people and some people believe it. But you won't get another chance after you're dead and gone. I'm just here to simply tell you, I haven't read through Genesis to Malachi, Matthew to Revelation, where you can have another chance when you're dead and gone. So if you're one to believe that and you're looking at me, I'm telling you now, earth is where the place is where you need to accept him now before you're dead and gone. Accept in your heart. Because if you don't, there is not enough goodness of your own that can have you have eternal life. Accept him. Earth is where it is. Your destination. You want it to be eternal. God, I, I, help me to begin again. Lord, help me to begin again. Christ, help me to begin again. Holy Spirit, help me to begin again. Father, help me to begin again. To begin again by yielding yourself and giving yourself to him. Most of us sometimes 
uh, believe we will make a fresh start. But it becomes more and more difficult as we begin to break away. The longer we stay off the potter's wheel and out of his shaping hand, the harder the work, uh, the clay becomes. It gets harder and harder. The for, listen, you can't see far, far away, but bring it up close. You can see and then move it back and keep moving it back. And keep moving it back. It becomes so far that you can no longer see what used to stand in front of you. The number of people knowing themselves to be misshapen vessels is very large indeed. But most are not willing to start over. I'm going to just give you two seconds to think about that before I can even move forward. Allow yourself to think about the mindset of a person who not even willing to start over. Forget throwing in the towel. Forget losing hope for a second. They don't even have the mindset to start over. Maybe you don't have to imagine a person. Maybe that's you. Maybe that person was you where you just said, I, I didn't even have the desire, the will, the strength to start over. I didn't even have the desire to pray to God to start over. But Lord, <laughs> help me to begin again. Paul proclaimed in 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and 2. Then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation have I heard thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The time of salvation is now. Don't put off what you know you should be doing. The time is now. Call that person that you should be calling now. Pick up the phone for the person that's calling you now. Go back and apologize. Accept someone's apology. Fix. Try to fix what you can within your own will. Accept him now as your Lord and Savior so you can have eternal life. Give back to him by him using you as a vessel and spreading the word that God is a great God, not just a God of second chances. He's so great that he allowed me, dirty old me, to become bigger and brighter. So what you see now, you didn't see before. That's because God came in and remolded, reshaped, redesigned me. Now is the time. What they say in church, now is the accepted time. Now is the time. One of the things we should have, we should have like people in foreign lands, we should have their desire because they come to America believing in the land of second chances and new beginnings. They don't have any money. They don't have any family. All they have is a will and a, a, and, and a desire to be able to become something better and greater or just to be able to get out of the situation that they're in. We need to have that same desire of people in foreign lands. They are willing to wait years uh, to accumulate enough money to travel to America. They are willing to adjust to a new culture, learn a new language, start um, at the bottom of the ladder all over again and call, crawl their way back up. They are willing to face difficulty and uncertainty in their passport or visa, immigration procedures and so much more to gain an entrance so that someday they will be able to start a new life in a new land. They have the desire to get to America, but we don't have the same desire to get to Christ, to get to know Christ, to give to Christ. All we want to take, 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 take. All we want to do is just receive, receive, receive. But God is just simply saying, how much are you going to give to me? How much will you let me use you to be able to get to the darkest day and to the darkest of people? How much? How long will you continue to receive and take and not give? People in foreign lands are driving themselves crazy to get here. But that's just how much you should be trying to get to him. It's like Jordan's in a line or tickets to a crazy concert. I'm looking at people when Tiff and Malachi and all of us was going through this COVID stuff in line. For a COVID test. And I'm talking to people in line 
and most of the people in line are, are, are trying to get a COVID test so they can leave to go out of town. This is at seven o'clock in the morning. We are all in a line standing out in the cold. We got so much drive to go out of town to stand in line in the cold just so we can go out of town. We don't have the same drive and will to come to church, to pray, to study, to give tithes, to be obedient. We have came into a day and time where obedience is just shown the way. God is trying to give you another chance to get this thing right. But let me tell you why God is better than America, because America, you got to have that passport to get over here and that visa cleared and stamped. God says you don't need a passport or, or visa. I give you immediate entrance into my life. There is a door you can walk right through immediately. You don't have to worry about anything else. My arms are open. If you just come into my bosom and allow me to love you, take care of you. And all I re- ask in return is your obedience. As the word says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Because sometimes sacrifice is just what it is for that moment. Sacrifice. But obedience takes more time. It takes more effort. It takes you killing the flesh. It's just like I said to you before in a sermon. If obedience is all you have, then that's enough. But I say to you again, once you enter, you must trust, (laughs) trust the process. You do not have to wait until you can offer God a beautiful, fully proportioned vessel or life. The moment you yield your life to the shaping and pressure of the divine potter, that is the moment that his loving hands begins to work of the salvation upon our lives. Come here, uh, Peter. Peter made a good beginning with the loud promises, but as he went out, he, he, he yielded to outward pressure. Suddenly he realized that his failure and he began to shed bitter tears just like most of us when we realize we have done wrong. He knew that he was marred. Do you know that you're marred? Did you, do you know that you have fallen short or you just accepted that? He was marred, but God made him over again. And though Peter was made over again, his obedience for the love of God, Peter began and literally God reshaped him throughout the rest of his life. Will you allow, allow God to reshape you? Will you allow God to change some things in your life? I need you to understand that God is simply saying to you, and I'm gone, I've been up here long enough, that he's so great. He's saying to you that I'll bring treasures out of trash, jewels out of junk. I'll bring the glory out of uh, of garbage. I'll bring riches out of rubbish. I'll bring diamonds out of debris. I'll bring riches out of the riffraff. I know people say that you are messy, but I can make literally your mess into something greater. I'll bring majesty out of your mess. I'll bring deliverance to the drug addict that y'all said couldn't be delivered. I'll bring deliverance to that drug addict that y'all threw up, that y'all threw the towel in and said that he can't be fixed and he can't be healed. I'll bring praise out of the prostitute that stands on John Arter. I can deliver whoever it is, but I need the church to stand up and stand toe to toe with the devil and say that with God, who can stand before me? There is nothing no one can do. Give me a child like Jeremiah and I'll turn him into a prophet. Give me a four eyed little boy that can't see nearsighted or farsighted, who was a PK and wings of love, who said that preachers didn't make enough money. I'll make him be a liar and make him a preacher and not only make him a preacher, be able to use him with the great anointing to be able to give the message to the people. Here it is. I said that. And look at me now. I wouldn't change it for nothing in the world because I don't have enough to go against God. I went against, I went against God long enough. So as the doors of the church are open, I'm done. I need you to know that all he need is a piece of clay. And he can bring praise out of that prostitute. 
that he can deliver that, 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 that drug addict, that he can make you greater than you think you are or not. God won't give up on you. God won't toss you to the side. God won't dismiss you as a lost cause and disregard you as hopeless. God won't throw in the towel. God says, I'm here for you. And I need you to understand that. So at the doors of the church are open. You can come by letter of Christian experience. This is the time is now where you can accept him as your savior. Where you can simply say, God, I accept you as my savior. I believe in my heart that you died on the cross. I believe that you rose again with all power in your hands. I believe that you are in the, the trenches with me. I believe that. If you believe that truly in your heart, if you don't, don't just believe it because I make it sound good or it's cute. If you truly believe that thing, then I need you to believe in your actions. And how do you believe in your actions? If he say go, then go. If he say stay, then stay. Your obedience will show that you truly trust him in the process. Wings of love, I love you. Peace out. That sermon provoked my thinking. That sermon that Minister Alvin Jackson preached let me know that it is not over yet. When it seemed like I am a failure, I know God who is the potter can turn my failure into success. And you think because of the mistakes that you have made that it is all over, that it is the end. Let me tell you, God, can take your situation, turn that situation around, just like he can take clay. You remember Jeremiah, boy, you gotta read it. Boy, I mean, Al, I mean, he ripped that text up, boy, I tell you. You got to read it because the hardened clay was thrown out into the field. You can't do nothing with hard clay. I'm not gonna be long, because you know, you, you don't preach behind no preach, Al preach. But I remember when I was young, I went out in the woods in Inkster and we used to pick up clay, it was hard. The hard clay was no good. You couldn't do anything with it. You had to get rid of it. But the clay that you could mold, we used to have it in school, you can mold and shape that clay. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, that's what God can do with you. He can mold you and shape you over again. Lord, help me to begin again. Don't give up. Don't take your life. Don't throw in the towel. He can help you <laughs> begin again. Give you a new start. Give you a new lease on life. That was a good message. Also, I want you brothers and sisters to keep Minister Alvin Jackson and his family in prayer. God has brought his wife and his son, my grandson, my daughter-in-law, and my son and I prayed, brought them through. God healed them of COVID-19, of that virus. And so I would ask that you would give him a love offering. You know, we ain't preaching for money. You can't pay for the gospel, but give him a love offering where he can buy some more books, get his clothes clean. You know, that's what the old preachers used to tell us a long time ago. Thank you so much, Wings of Love and friends and sharing with Minister Alvin Jackson and giving him a love gift. Now, for the whole month of February, again, uh, we're going virtual. Uh, we're gonna miss in-person worship, but let me tell you that this virus, brothers and sisters, has increased. Now you ha we have what you call Omicron. So I'm praying for the members who've been affected by this virus that they would have a speedy recovery. And uh, we just want to keep it clean. We just want to 
uh, get it ready when we come back. But also I'm concerned about your safety. And I'm concerned about mine too. Because Pastor love you. And I care for you. And I want you healthy and whole. All right, every head bowed, every eye closed. Wait, before I pray, you know, I, <laughs> I know y'all like, what? You, that's how I am dressed. But no, I just want you to know, you know, they helping me like T.D. Jakes, you know. You know, we got we to catch up. You know, Al, and I'm telling you, these young brothers, boy, they put the hoodie on and the hat. You know, I have to do the same thing. You know, the old man have to do it. So I got a hoodie and a hat on. All right, God bless you. Let's pray. God, our Father, we come to thank you for a second chance, a third chance. Thank you for putting us back on the wheel of life, oh God, and not disposing of us and throwing us away. We thank you for molding and shaping us in your wheel, in your way, in your word. Oh God, we thank you that you look beyond all of our faults and saw our needs. Thank you for your divine covenant with Israel and then your divine covenant with your church. Oh God, thank you for your divine love. Because if you did not have mercy on us and compassion, we would be consumed. So here we are yielding ourselves and surrendering ourselves like the clay to the potter's hand. We pray in Jesus' name while we are waiting and yielding still. Shape us, mold us, and make us. Please, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Take that message with you. See you Wednesday.